All right, so everybody watching, welcome back. This is part two, just to keep these manageable clip sizes going, part two of our special day two session um, on Sunday, July 12th. So we're looking right now at the phase two, which is blue belt and purple belt slash phase two of my FMA core curriculum. Okay, we're all ready now to go into the Largo add-on. So hopefully everybody remembers the backhand series, right? Backhand, backhand X, backhand redondo, backhand X to the redondo, backhand redondo to the X. Now for everybody watching, just a quick review, we also have backhand to the key lot and backhand to the split the Kawaiian, right? Those are phase, uh, phase one green belt requirements. I went a little fast because right now phase two, for the sake of your learning, don't worry about key lot and don't worry about split the Kawaiian. Just the destruction, the X, the redondo, the X to redondo, the redondo to X. Those are all you need to focus on and, and just keep in mind, okay? So the, the backhand series, let's give a little bit of context. This is a Largo series. The idea is at the range where you can hit each other's hands, you're destroying my hand or defanging the snake. That's, that's kind of the idea, the, the theory behind the backhand series. Well, now we're gonna add in three more series of Largo hand destruction. So I wanna make sure I'm, I'm getting this right and just real quickly, I know, I know this block is in there because I verified that. I just wanna make sure, because sometimes I'm certain that I wrote something a certain way at a certain level and then I go back and I'm like, well, that was not at all what I thought I wrote. So let me just confirm uh, what kind of how we're approaching this. Okay, so meet the force. That's meet the force is blue belt, perfect. So, and we'll add the other two after this. So um, the backhand series, when, and typically we take this off the feed of the first five angles. And now you all know Regino Illustrissimo. So if you want to start playing with that Cinco Tero, right, five beat attack. This is a Cinco Tero, diagonal, diagonal, horizontal, horizontal thrust. This is a Cinco Tero, diagonal, horizontal, horizontal, diagonal thrust. If you wanna start playing with that, you certainly can. But we, we usually take these off a Cinco Tero or a set of five attacks, okay? So backhand, we were, we were backhanding at every angle, no matter what. Didn't matter if the elevation changed, if it was a thrust, it was that backhand. Meet the force when you, so everybody face the camera. We're gonna do this slow motion. Obviously I can't really hit you. Give me a slow motion angle one. As you're doing your angle one, I destroy your hand and see the force is meted, right? You were going, this direction trying to hit me, I met that force and with a tighter angle one and I destroyed your hand. Now give me angle two through the camera, please. There's my angle two, I would hit your hand and do a tighter angle two. Give me angle three, I go over the top and I cut your hand or hit your hand or your forearm. Give me angle four, there we go. And then five is, give me angle five, five I just come down and smash. But does everybody see the, it's called meet the force for a reason. The force is coming at you this direction, you go for my hand, that's it. So I'll have Rob and Karen kind of lightly do it. Everybody can watch as they move. Would you, would you two do it again? I don't care who does what, right? Just nice and slow. You don't even, if you want to touch each other lightly, beautiful, but you have live sticks. So that's exactly it. Does everybody see that? Could you give us one more rep, please? It doesn't matter who does what. That's fantastic. Meet the force. This is meet the force. Beautiful. Okay, time. Old school, when we have a lot of time, you would do one set like you just saw. That was one set 
with the destruction only. Then you would do one set. I destroy your one. Go ahead. I want to hit you. Sorry. I destroy your one. I make the X. I destroy your two. I make the X. I destroy your three. I make the X. I destroy your four. I make the X. I destroy your five. And I make the X. Now, you're all very smart, diligent students. You might have noticed. Now, we have variables on the forehand and the backhand side, and you are responsible for tracking which side you're on to perform the drill correctly. Um, could you, Rob and Karen, could you do, just do what you just did with Rob as the receiver? So everybody watch. Okay, destroy the hand. Okay, good. If Karen's doing it, that's fine. See, forehand side. Backhand side. Forehand side. Backhand side. Does everybody see? So your destruction, I'm, I'm open. When I destroy your one, I'm going through. I'm going to be closed. So all of my counters from, the, from angle one are going to be from the backhand side. When your two is coming in and I destroy your two, I'm now open. And all of my counters from angle two or against angle two are going to be from the open or forehand side. Three is just like one. Four is just like two. And five is just like one and three. Okay. Now I do want to point out for meet the force angles one through four, you are effectively doing a tighter version of the same angle to destroy their hand. Five, that's not true. Because if you do an angle five, when I give you an angle five, we'll both hit each other. Five, you just kind of come down on it and destroy it. So without chewing up all of our remaining time, it would be the same thing. One, redondo. Destroy the two, redondo. Now we have, here we have to start playing with our forehand redondo. Destroy the three, redondo. Destroy the four, redondo. Destroy the five, redondo. We also have, because I told you there's five variables, just the destruction, the X, the redondo. Destroy the one, X to the redondo. Destroy the two, X to the redondo. The three, the four, I'm not going to do all five, eight. you get the point, okay? Along with the last requirement for meet the force, which is the Largo series at Blue Belt, destroy the one, redondo to the X, destroy the two, redondo to the X, the three, the four, and the five. Okay, so that is meet the force. Now, here's just something, since there's five variables, this is a way that I came up with to shortcut it, but I want you to be aware of something if you use this shortcut, but just watch. Destroy the one, it's the destruction. Destroy the two, make the X. Destroy the three, make the redondo. Destroy the four, make the X to the redondo. Destroy the five, make the redondo to the X. That's an expedited way of going through all the variables. The only thing that I want you to be aware of, if you do that, you might only be experiencing some of those variables on one side or the other. So that's kind of what you lose. If you, um, and again, I don't, I don't want to be a hypocrite, and I, I, honesty and transparency. I don't have a heavy bag. I don't have tires. I don't have a bob dummy. I don't really have anything here in my apartment to, to strike. If you wanted to do even 30 second rounds of nothing but one variable, that would be awesome. Like you do destroy the one to X, destroy the two to X, and you just keep going through that 30 second rounds, 40 second rounds. That would be awesome. Um, it's one of those things where if I force you to do all the variables the way that it was traditionally done, that's going to take up our entire class. Okay, so 
martial artists are funny that way though because some of them will be like well that's okay that's a good investment of time and then others will be like well that's not okay there's so much other stuff i need to learn what i would probably say is if you if we use our class time for conceptual understanding and you can get the reps in during homework time on your own that's probably the best situation and if you don't have anything to hit do it in the air because doing something is way better than doing nothing that's meet the force okay so since we just learned that and everybody looked awesome and conceptually this will pave the way for this to go like twice as fast let's jump to purple belt where we finish this family of drills, follow the force and the forehand series, okay? Now follow the force, yeah, it's, it's not quite, so you have the idea, Karen and Rob, it's not quite as clean on angle one and angle two. When the person is really authentically trying they don't have to be trying to take you out but if, even when they authentically just try to touch you here for one and here for two it changes things so one you're really trying to like lean out at the proper moment and because again follow the force you're behind it angle two we usually when it's a really committed attack you usually see it expressed like people duck and they'll swat it. And I'm talking like, you know, Robin, I'm, Robin Karen, you're excellent martial artist. You're, you're training slow right now with live sticks. And it's different when it's a real line and that person is committed to hitting you. And I want to, I want to qualify this properly. I'm not saying it's a bad technique. Um, I'm saying it's way harder than meet the force. Those first two beats, three and four, you're, you're going to be closed when three comes in. You're just going to go over the top. When four comes in, you're going to be open. You're going to go over the top. When five comes in, you're just going to open that again. Three, four, and five are really pretty quasi-symmetrical, and it's not that bad. One and two are awkward. When, when you, again, when you have a feeder that's really, they don't have to be trying to take you out, but that's determined to actually touch on the lines where you're supposed to be. Yeah, that's it. Feel the difference, Karen? Even in that one, right? It's different. So just be aware of that, everybody. Um, sometimes in martial arts, um, this statement might offend some people. Sometimes in martial arts, we're dealing in theory. I'm, I'm theorizing that this is how it's going to be in certain beats, um, but it is what it is, okay? So if here's the thing, right? If I'm your feeder, you all have to start closed. We're always going to be on opposite sides. Whenever I'm open, you're closed. Whenever I'm closed, you're open during this, right? So here, we're going to go nice and slow. So imagine leaning out and destroying my one. Let it go through. And then get down a little bit and swat that. Yeah, swat that over for three, right? So you should all be closed. Go over the top for four. That's it. You should all be open. Go over the top for five. And then just like I'm giving you this line straight, just cut that line and hit my arm. Yeah. Okay. Um, good. And just make sure... I start closed, I open on one, I close on two, I open on three, I close on four, and I open on five. You have to be on the opposite side. So one, three, and five, you have to be, um, you have to be closed. Two and four, you have to be open to do this series properly. Does that track for everybody? Okay. And then you have the same five variables. So you could do sets of five, just the destruction, the X, the redondo, X to redondo, redondo to X, 
or we also do like an expedited round the same way that I show you where you just destroy the one, you, you follow the two and make the X, you follow the three and make the redondo, you follow the four and make the X to the redondo, you follow the five and make the redondo to the X. So that's an expert. That's probably, well, I shouldn't say probably. When I test people on this, I usually do that because I, I mean, I can tell within a matter of moments. It's not a statement of ego if the person understands it. I don't need to see five sets of five, I don't need to see 25 reps uh, of stuff on this. Okay. So that's follow the force. We have the backhand series, meet the force, follow the force. And now we're ready for the fourth and final series in this family, which is the forehand series. This is gonna be so simple for you. So remember what we were doing on the backhand? Backhand wat ticks, destroy, destroy to X, destroy to redondo, destroy X to redondo, destroy redondo to X, but all on the forehand side. And the, any kind of awkwardness where some angles were easier to pick off than others when you were learning the backhand series, it's going to be the same thing on the forehand series. Some angles are going to be, it's going to be intuitive where to meet that on the like center line to destroy it. Other angles are going to be more awkward and that it is what it is. And again, you could do five reps of just the destruction, five reps of destruction to X, destruction to Redondo, destruction X to Redondo, destruction Redondo to the X, or you could do an expedited round. You destroy the one, you destroy the two and X, you destroy the three and Redondo, you destroy the four and X to Redondo, you destroy the five and Redondo to X. Um, I'm, I'm, I try to maintain a relative level of perception of reality. It's a big curriculum. I get that. I really do. But I hope you're also seeing where things thread together. Okay. It's one area that I think I'm, because it's my background as an educator, one area that I think I excel in with no ego in martial arts curriculum design, because I have so much time doing English language arts, I taught computer applications, I was an assistant principal, I had to manage a bunch of different year-long curriculum plans. So here, I'm trying to do the same thing. So even if certain variables, maybe you don't have them in this moment today, at least conceptually, if you're making connections, oh, okay, oh, I kind of see what he did there and like how this is all layering, that's the most important thing because I mean, yeah, the curriculum is the curriculum. And if you'd like to earn instructorship from me, which I mean, everybody who's here, uh, I can't give you anything, but I would be honored. Everybody here, if you put in the time to earn instructorship in, in anything from me, that'd be awesome. Um, yes. I want you to the, the curriculum is a life raft, like the curriculum will keep you afloat and give you a pathway. But I also, while you're working through all of this, I want you to think about, again, developing your own identity in the Filipino martial arts as a technician, as a fighter, you know, even if that just is soft stick sparring, um, as an instructor. And Long term, and this is the last thing I'll say, and then we're moving on. Long term, develop your ability to see. Okay, it's as the years went on, a lot of my students, I would always invite them to the public seminars that I would attend, and we would partner. And again, it just a lot of my students would be like, How did you get all that? I got all of that because I've spent so much time seeing into the progression of different instructors. And certainly people can still do stuff. And I'm like, what, what was that? Like, it certainly happens to me 
from time to time. But the, but the main people that I work with, um, as the decades go by, I mean, they're really doing a lot of the same concepts and ideas again and again. And, and it's like, oh, okay, it's that, or it's that concept or idea repackaged with a couple of additional movements. Okay. And so think about that, not only in Filipino martial arts, but any other martial arts that you study, develop your ability to see into the art and kind of figure out how, if you're watching, if you're watching something in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, try to, oh, that, that concept has something to do for me intellectually with Wing Chun and I'm gonna grab onto that connection and that connection is gonna help me learn this, this particular block faster. And just try to kind of cultivate that within yourselves as, uh, as learners. Okay, so um, we have all those. And that, this is my little dopey expression. I like to call that whole family the four corners of Largo. And the reason I'm saying that you now have, again, in theory, because it's hard to do in real time, you have a whole system of hand destructions, if you think about it. No matter where my hand is at, I can forehand lop tick, or I can forehand wah tick. Go ahead. Um, I can backhand lob tick or I can backhand watik no matter where I was, because again, you're probably gonna be in motion. You're not gonna be static. Okay, I'm doing the, the backhand drill now, okay? That's typically, I mean, we learn it that way, but it's gonna evolve over time as you develop your, your fighting style. Okay, um, let me, again, give me one moment here. I, I, I picked some things that I thought and I was hoping we could work on um, together. Okay, so um, this might seem like an odd choice, but especially because so many people here have the experience with me, um, I want to talk about the break-in to Five Count Sombrata which is at Blue Belt, which again, I know using the tech, that might seem like an odd choice, but you all have the experience, so it's actually a really good choice, okay? The break-in, it is one side of empty six. Inward, backhand, backhand. Inward, backhand, backhand. So imagine that you and I are doing that together. We're both doing that motion. And what I'm looking to do is time every third beat. One, two, there. One, two, there. One, two, there. On that third beat, the person who's breaking in is going to do a roof block instead of that. So you have one, two, roof. And now I'm in. I would be checking your hand. And I'm ready to give you this angle one. You would inside deflect you would give me the angle four, and then we would continue. Okay, now, um, Rob and Karen, do you have that? Can somebody break in on the other person? Nice and slow. Three, good. Do a few cycles of that. That's it. And then see, now they're in Sombrata. Boom, okay. So, and, and now, that was great. That was, that was excellent. This, this way, I just have you all do it. That's that fantastic. Okay, that's the way it should go. Um, breaking out. Okay, so you have to know how to break in. You have to know how to break out. So you're looking. This is at Largo. I'm doing this with my partner. Boom. And I gotta time it. I don't want it to come after the fact. So let me do it wrong, everybody. Not oh that. That's that's too late. One two in route. And you're in, right? And you saw what Rob and Karen did. As Karen entered, and then she was checking. She was all ready to give that angle one, and then we're in the Sombrata cycle. Now, how do we break out? You look for your dropstick beat. You swing that out, 
and then you step back out and go back to the pattern. Right, so Rob and Karen, somebody break in on each other. Rob broke in. Okay, so some brada for a little while. And then keep some brada in. And then Rob, eventually look for your drop stick beat and swing it out. Okay, so try it again. Break in. So Rob, you do it, okay? You do both. So Rob, you're looking for the third beat. Boom, beautiful. Okay, so some brada for a little bit. And eventually, Rob, you're looking for your dropstick beat. You're going to swing with your left hand and step out back to Largo. Okay, good. So the only thing that was, that was really close, dropstick, swing. That's, that's the motion. That's it, palm, up or, uh, palm up or palm down. Swing to your left as you step back. That's it. That was, that was great, Karen. That was it. Okay. So hopefully everybody sees what we have here. Now you, yes, it's a pattern. It's a drill. Don't get too pleased with yourselves. Now I can break into some rod on anybody I want. No, it's a drill. Okay. I mean, it's a cool drill and it teaches you a lot, but let's keep some perspective, but we're going from Largo and we're purposefully entering to Medio. Um, and then when I'm ready, I'm gonna swing back out and terminate where I started. Okay, and now let's talk about five count sombrata, everybody, even if you're by yourself. Okay, so, and you know what? Let's, let's actually do this through the camera. So I'm A and you're B. So you feed me over the top for my roof, Boom, and I'm here, okay? I set you up for your inside deflect. You set me up for my drop stick. Okay, we're gonna freeze here. And I want you to visualize, I want you to imagine I'm actually checking like your left, I'm so sorry, your right forearm, and my stick is maintaining contact with your stick. In this moment, I'm gonna give you an angle five. You're gonna low wing, yep. So Rob, would you do, yeah, everybody look pretty good. Um, and then Logan, your, the tip of your stick from your perspective down to your right. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Boom. You're going to check underneath, um, underneath your stick, Chris, oh, take your, there it is right there, right there. You're checking there. Okay. From here, flip to angle two, just, just flip your stick. That's it and you set me up for my high shield. And now we've completed one side. That was five tools. You're A now, you roof, you give me angle one. I'm gonna give you angle four, you drop stick and check. Okay, you thrust the five and I go here. And now I'm gonna flip to angle two, you're gonna high shield and check. That's it. Um, under under your arm, Logan. There it is. Perfect. That's it. Okay. So try to think of it like this. You already know three fifths of that drill really, really well. Everybody here, you know three fifths of that drill really well. Um, who is that going to be? Boom, boom, boom. Uh, the what? The dropstick person. Now thrust. That sets up the, the low wing. The low wing person is just, you can either flip to angle two, or if you want a low wing and just chamber, whatever you're more comfortable with. Cause like one of my students in Australia, that flip was just bugging him. He didn't like it. So no problem, just chamber, boom, and set your part, but it's an angle two, okay? The most common error to help you all avoid this the per this is oh, of years and years of teaching this to people. After the low wing, people flip to the angle one line. That's the most common error. And that screws the pattern up. That person's probably going to inside deflect and, and continue at a different point in the pattern. Now, freelancing is something you'll do later where you'll break the pattern. But it's just like language. You can't have a conversation in real time until all the pieces are there, right? Syntax 
and grammar. That's, that's conversant. But you can't do that until you have the basics of the language. So for now, the pattern's got to be the pattern. Eventually, you'll break it, just like combat, okay? So it, now, instead of roof, inside, deflect, drop stick, roof, inside, deflect, drop stick, low wing, high shield. So A roofs, B inside deflects, um, A drop sticks, B low wings, and A does the high shield. And then it switches. All right. So yeah, Rob and Karen, can you just do five counts in Brada? You don't have to do the break in. Just let me see. Boom, boom, boom. That's it. Boom. Good. That's nice. This way everybody can see it. Okay, time. Thank you so much. Great. That looks great. Um, and just two ideas for everybody for blue belt for right now. Drop stick, thrust. Not drop stick, remove, not, not drop stick, check and remove. Not yet. Drop stick, go. Drop, enter. Right? That's what you want. And the other thing especially with sticks, it doesn't have to be hard. Like I'm, I'm looking at myself right now on my screen. Really try to just touch them. Touch, not hit, but touch where you think their navel is. That's super important. That yesterday we were, we were looking at a focus mitt drill and I was saying that nice people will often feed the bob and weave over other people's heads because they're nice. That is nice, but that doesn't help that person. In the same way that here, if, if it's my turn to drop stick thrust and I go to the side of you, well, I want to be not, I don't, I don't want to be rude. I'm not helping you. It doesn't have to be hard. Like I know I keep beating up on this chair, just touch. That's all I'm talking, touch. Just, just legitimately, Try to if they don't move out of the way, and um, and reangulate, then just touch them in the navel. Very important. Other than that, that looks excellent. Okay, and everybody training solo, that you look good as well. I know how frustrating it is, but again, you have three fifths of it down really well. So that's what we're adding at the purple belt level. Um, Okay, let's grab two sticks. All right. So this will be cool because this will kind of go back to what I was talking about earlier with Regino Illustrissimo, the relationship of Regino Illustrissimo to Flora Villabrea, and this really cool family of drills for which we are the only people as in Asanto FMA lineage people carrying this on. All right, everybody remember double stick versus single stick of Bicidario? Close, hit, open, hit. Okay, we're gonna do double stick versus double stick. Double stick versus double, double stick is this. You, your right side dominant, Close, hit, open a backhand angle, hit, and then your left side dominant. Close, hit, open, hit. The backhand angle is going to change. You'll, you'll see exactly what I mean in just a second. The forehand angle is not. I'm going to feed you through the screen. You're going to be fine. Everybody open. Okay. So now... I know before I would hide one and so pretend I only have one. No, no, no. This is double stick versus double stick. Okay. So your right hand dominant for two, for, for the usual, close it, meet it, open it, meet it. Now immediately you do the same thing, left side dominant, close, meet, open, meet. Okay, now we're, that was the first set. It's only the backhand that changes. So that backhand was angle two or the high diagonal. 
This will always be angle one. Close it. Meet it. Okay, set two. Open angle four. Meet it. Repeat that on your left side. Close. Meet it. Open angle four. Meet it. That was set two. Again, it's only the backhand angle that changes. Close the one. Meet it. Okay, set three is angle 10. Meet it. Repeat that on the left. Close it. Meet it. Open this backhand diagonal. Meet it. Good. Okay, next set. Close it. Meet it. Horizontal at your knees. So get a little lower and open it. That's good, Karen. Good. I like that. Uh huh. And then here, close it. Meet it. Horizontal at your knees. Get a little lower. Good. Meet it. Beautiful. Okay, next. I think we're on five or whatever. Next set. Close it. Meet it. Horizontal at your ankle. Get lower. Yep, and open it. You're, you're always opening backhands. Got it. And then we're repeating that. Left side. Close it. Meet it. Open this. Get low. Okay. And then meet it. Beautiful. Okay, two more sets. Close it. Meet it. Open this backhand angle. Uh-huh. Meet it. Beautiful. Close it. Meet it. Open this backhand angle. Meet it. Beautiful. Last set. Close it. Meet it. Open this. Meet it. Got it. Close this. Meet it. Open this. Meet it. Then there is, there's an ending, but for right now, that is, that's most of it, and that's super sufficient. Conceptually, do you all understand that you're just repeating the same thing? Right side dominant, close angle one. Right side dominant, open whatever backhand angle he gives me. Repeat that on left side dominant. Close the one, open whatever backhand angle he gives me. Purple belt, you'll mem hopefully memorize or you're allowed, because everybody learns differently, um, you can have notes, but you have to learn the feed. It's, I just like to preserve it, okay? That's, that's been the feed for 15 years, 14 years, something like that. And, and then, like I said, there's a little ending that gets tacked on there, but right now, conceptually, that's great. But does everybody see... Again, I mean, everybody did well, so I don't think this is poorly chosen wordage. Does everybody see how simple that is conceptually? Hopefully, right side dominant. Always close angle one. Meet it. Always open whatever backhand angle. And then immediately repeat that same sequence, left hand dominant. Close one. Open the same backhand. Um, when people are first learning this, you're welcome to just do it in any order you want to do it in. Even though I know I just said it purple, you'll memorize it. But if, you, if you're just getting blue belt, which is just being able to receive it, have your partner give you, you know, your partner gives you, always gives you angle one and meets it. Have your partner give you any backhand angle and meet it. Then immediately repeat that on the left hand side. Then you're ready for set two. Always angle one, then they give you any backhand angle. Then immediately repeat that on the left hand side. And just do that for five or six sets. Switch roles, okay? If you're one of those people that's already like, no, it's not good enough, I gotta learn it. If angle two, angle four, angle 10, lateral at the knee, Lateral at the ankle, backhand thrust, backhand redonda. And a little trick for your learning, that'll be on video, and it's in your curriculum if you're a member, okay? Two, four, ten, lateral at your knee, lateral at your ankle, backhand thrust, redonda. A little trick on the redonda. Feeding the redonda is hard. You start on your backhand, and then you have to withdraw 
to your forehand. I don't go all the way through, because if I go all the way through, I won't be on my backhand side to do the meet. You, you give that angle and then you open. So angle one, meet. Backhand redondo, open and meet. Angle one, meet. Backhand redondo, and I gotta open it and meet it on the forehand side. That's it. Okay? That's double stick versus double stick abecedario. And again, um, for an overview, all of this kind of material that seems related, this is all that Regino Illustrissimo slash Flora Villabrea intersection um, that we have in our lineage as Innocenzo Lacosta people. All right. Um, let's let's go over this quick hang on one second let me just confirm what i wrote <laughs> that way i'm not giving you okay so let, we can we can knock out our coordination drills pretty quickly and that'll give me 15 minutes 10 minutes for lens siri and we can round up our day with that okay so um all right three coordination drills Blue belt, you're just learning the heaven variation. Okay, alta de bajo, inward, backhand, inward, close, backhand, backhand, tuck. So there's a prefix, a three beat prefix. Your body is going to want to do empty six. Fight that instinct because it's inward, backhand, inward, close, backhand, backhand, tuck. So think about, for all these, think about heaven six, right? Inward, backhand, backhand, inward, backhand, backhand. Now, inward, low backhand, high inward, backhand, backhand. One, you have that little prefix, and that little prefix never changes. And you'll see what I mean, right? Because right now we're doing alta de bajo heaven. You don't, you don't change the prefix for Alta de Bajo standard nor Alta de Bajo earth, okay? And this is wrist as opposed to empty six, <clears throat> excuse me, which was your arm, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> it's almost like I talked too much or something. Okay, um, here. Strangely enough, and this point has been hammered home by numerous instructors, the old masters would count the prefix as one B. They would count this as one, two, three, four, five, six. So even though that has more than, way more than six beats, they still count it as six. Inward, backhand, inward, backhand, backhand, inward, backhand, inward, backhand, backhand, tuck. Okay, that's it. And like I said, for students of mine who have completed phase one, the biggest problem and the most common mistake is your body wants to go inward, backhand, backhand because of empty sick. Don't let it. Inward, backhand, inward. That's a very tricky combo, by the way. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Um, and if you have that like knockout power um in your abanico like uh chris you know and i sh uh, we have guru sunny who's our dosi paris instructor it's if you've ever seen abanicos and been like man i don't there's no power there i don't like it i don't ever want to get hit by guru sunny's abanicos they're amazing okay so that's that's not a bad combo to set up boom 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 and then you run through okay so that's Alta de Bajo. Now let's let's just finish this because it's so simple. The prefix never changes, but if you go low backhand, high backhand, it's Alta de Bajo standard. Low, high. If you go double high, which we've been doing, it's Alta de Bajo heaven. If you go low, low, it's Alta de Bajo Earth. The prefix never changes, low, low. Boom, 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 low, low, okay? So I'll only do one side. If it's double high, it's Alta de Bajo Heaven. 
If it's low, high, it's Alta de Bajo standard. If it's low, low, it's Alta de Bajo earth. So to give you a quick understanding, blue belt, you're just learning the heaven variations of three coordination drills. Purple belt, you're required to have the heaven standard and earth variations for these three drills. Alta de Bajo is the first one. Okay, second one. Of, of that relationship that I just explained. La Costa eight count. This is gonna be so easy for you because this one is almost like empty six. So remember, heaven six was this, right? La Costa eight count, I'm gonna lean with my, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like almost side facing and I'm gonna add a low backhand to heaven six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's all it is. This is a combo that the original double stick uh, dog brothers curriculum really utilized because they like that you're kind of fighting over your shoulder here. You have uh, the ability to be shoulder facing. Like if I can't avoid getting hit, hopefully I'm getting hit on my shoulder and I'm getting to do all that damage. Okay, so that one's very simple because if you have heaven six, which you all do, do the first beat of heaven six, then go low with your, with your elbow as the fulcrum, like empty six, and then finish with the back hands as normal. Okay, all right, so that's, that's uh, La Costa eight count, and that is technically that you will always go low on the second shot, no matter what. That is technically La Costa eight count heaven. La Costa eight count standard, high, low, high, low. High, low, high, low. High, low, high, low. High, low, high, low. This is La Costa eight count standard. La Costa eight count earth's the easiest one. High, low, low, low. High, low, low, low. High, low, 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 high, low, low, low. Okay? So we have Alta de Bajo. We have uh, La Costa eight count. When, and we have one more in just a second. When we're just doing the heaven versions of those, what's going to be three, that's blue belt, double stick coordination drill requirements. When we're learning heaven, standard, and earth for the same combos, that's purple belt slash phase two uh, coordination drill requirements. Okay, odd 12. So we've done this before here and there, so bear with me. Six beats on each side. You have, you have two sides of your body, obviously, right? Right side, left side. The first two shots go through to the new side. The remaining four shots stay on that side. So watch. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, shh. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Give me, I need a few more minutes, guys. Shh. All right. So I'm on my left side. Two go through to my right side, and the four remaining shot stay there. I'm on my right side. One, two, go through to my left, four, I'm sorry, three, four, five, six. Okay, so what is a little weird about this one is one, two, one will chamber on your shoulder, hit three and go under your arm, four, five, six. What's also a little weird about this one, and, and this is one of the rare places I see this, is you finish with the untucked stick. A lot of time in Sinawali or double stick work, the tucking is the last shot. So um, I, I seriously, I know this is like the worst pun, like dad joke of all time. What, one way I remember this, I, I, I apologize in advance. It's called odd 12. It's a little odd, okay? It, it is, there's just some things about it that are a little strange, a little odd. That chambering and rechambering is odd. 
and the idea of ending a sequence with this untucked stick is a little odd, okay? But that's odd six or odd 12. So doing all the shots high is the heaven ver uh, version, and that's what would be required for Bluebell. Standard, you just got to count it. Beats two and beats five are low. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's odd 12 standard. Odd 12 earth is super simple. Everything's low. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so quick review of everything that we did, and then I have 10 minutes for lens theory. That'll be fine. Okay, so all to the bajo, inward backhand, inward. If you go double high backhand, it's all to the bajo heaven. Inward backhand, inward. If you go low high, it's all to the bajo standard. If you go inward backhand, inward, double low, it's all to the bajo earth. Lacoste eight count, high, low, high, 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 low, high, high. Or inward, low backhand, 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 inward, low backhand, backhand, backhand. Lacoste eight count heaven. Standard, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. Lacoste eight count earth. High, low, 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 high, low, low, low. Odd 12, heaven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Lacoste eight, I'm so sorry, uh, odd 12 standard. Beats two and beats five are low. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Odd 12 earth, everything's low. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so um, that's at least a lot of some of the core things that might jam you up a little bit when um, we think about coming into the phase two and remember the, uh, the intermediary belt is the blue belt and the purple belt is the phase two. And again, super quick, why do we have both? We have both because I started with the old phase system, which is how they used to do things at the Torrance Academy. Originally, there were just four phases of Filipino martial arts, three super curriculum heavy phases, and then phase four black belt, which looks a lot like the current phase four black belt exam. It's just too much curriculum spread over three levels. So later, not to make things take longer, but just to make things more manageable on people, um, we had the multiple levels. And then in 2010, Guru Inosanto asked us, his people he had certified as FMA instructors, if you have an FMA program, would you please start doing colored belts? So I wanted to, you know, honor the request of my instructor because he asked us to. So um, I merged the programs together. So yellow and orange are intermediary belts. Green belt is phase one. Blue is an intermediary. Purple is phase two. Brown is an intermediary. Red is phase three. And then black belt is just plain old phase four. Okay, so um, real quickly, I'm gonna share my screen with you all. Um, and let me, I'm gonna minimize this and move you all, move this out of the way. All right, and I will make this super quick and just kind of end on this. All right, and this is gonna be really informal even when I thought I was gonna have a little bit more time. Um, this is my concept, my idea. So if you ever want to use it, 
you are more than welcome to, but just like my doctoral dissertation, if you're writing a paper, just please give me a citation. So just don't try to pass this off as your own work. It's, this is something that I've kind of developed. So to round out our day, you know, I want you to think about uh, if you've ever been to the optometrist. And even if you haven't, you know, they put the big, the big lens pack in front of you and they show you the letters on the screen and they, you know, what, which one looks better, one or two or A and B. And they go through and they work their optometrist magic and then they're able to determine your prescription, okay? So in lens theory, excuse me for one second. Thank you. In lens theory, uh, I have three different lenses through which you can look at every part of your martial arts practice. And the lenses mean everything in martial arts with the exception of pure charlatanism. You know, again, we, we talked about this yesterday, Rob and I, um, like if there's a $5,000 workshop where if your chi is strong enough, you know, at the end of the weekend, you'll be levitating. Let me save you the five grand. Um, they're going to tell you your chi isn't strong enough at the end of the weekend. We're not talking about blatant charlatanism. Everything else, though, has relative value when you think about the three lenses. So uh, lens number one. Martial scholarship. So when we look through the lens of martial scholarship, we are learning. We might have questions here and there. Um, we might even start to have questions about like, well, when would I ever use that? Or how would I be able to pull that off? Martial scholarship is not really the lens through which to look though with questions like that. Questions like that are really reserved best for the next lens. Martial scholarship is the endeavor of the intellectual. This is where we're just learning, learning the material, um, getting a sense of how things work, finding our groove as a student. Um, if you've ever taken on a new endeavor of learning and you have that sort of magical, sorry everybody, I don't have a better expression, kind of honeymoon period where everything is new and everything is novel and you're just fired up all the time and you're like you're making everybody in your life sick as you're talking about this new class and how much you love it and how cool it is. And let me show you that. That's like the heart of martial scholarship. You're just learning all about that learning and acquiring the knowledge and the skills and, and whatever other benefits are coming out of that learning environment. Okay. Now, Lens number two is, I call it martial research. This is where you are actually going to try to apply what you're learning in some kind of a contested environment. But in martial research, this is the lens when there are rules. So this is soft stick sparring. Right, we agree we're only going to hit each other's hands, or we agree it's a three minute round, or we agree on a scale of one to ten, ten being the hardest that we're, we're never, we're never going to go above a three, okay, and, and so on. I'm just giving you examples. Um, this is sparring in class, this is rolling in class, this is, um, if you like in, in certain organizations, you have to do like a mock. MMA fight to, to achieve certain rank. This is Dog Brothers. This is amateur or professional martial athletics. This is MMA. This is UFC. This is anywhere where there are rules and you can say, okay, stop. Or if you get knocked unconscious, somebody can say, stop, 
on your behalf. This is where we test our art. This is where we figure out our ourselves and our styles <clears throat> and our toolboxes as a fighter. Our final lens is self-defense. And I know sometimes in contemporary martial arts, that's become like a really unpopular term. I, here I'm just using it to indicate that you are in a real situation where you have to use your martial arts in real time or the penalty for not being able to do so is injury ranging to death. It's a real situation with real consequences with somebody or mul a multitude of people trying to actually injure you or end you um, in real time. So because I'm running out of, because I'm, I'm supposed to be done, I'm gonna wrap this up in a couple of minutes here. These are the three lenses and I started talking about all of this and describing lens theory by describing that rig that an optometrist would use to figure out and diagnose your prescription. Well, just like that setup, here you can look through single lenses at any given time as appropriate based on the context. Here you can look at two out of the three lenses at any given time as appropriate based on the context. And here you can simultaneously, when appropriate, look through all three lenses. Um, and typically if you're looking through all three lenses, you're still gonna be in some kind of safe learning environment, but you're simultaneously filtering what is the intellectual aspect that I'm trying to learn or the kinesthetic skills that I'm trying to acquire? What are the methodologies that might take place in class that let me start to evaluate what I'm learning in a contested energy environment? And how would I modify that or change that or what would I need to think about if I were doing this in a real street situation? And, and I mean, that might be, you know, taking something that you learned in class and going out and buying a tactical flashlight or something along those lines, all right? And I'm going to wrap this up here. Um, this is a little less time than I wanted, but I, I know it's a problem um, <laughs> with me going over time and not sometimes being able to be incredibly succinct, but at least we had an overview. And the reason I'm presenting this to you is contemporary martial arts, the problem very often that I'm seeing is context and a lack of understanding about the relative value of most everything, again, not blatant charlatanism, based on the context in which you're evaluating that technique, that art, that progression, that family of techniques, that mindset, that training modifier, that training methodology, et cetera. So even just today, think about, we've definitely spent time, I mean, we spent a lot of our time in martial, we, if we're being real, we spent most of our time in martial scholarship. Um, there were moments like with Follow the Force where we had to really think about, okay, what would that look like? if the energy were a little bit more authentic, you know, rather than living in what I like to call drill land. Um, we kind of looked at that for the first two angles for follow the force. That's one example. Um, and frankly, we didn't spend a ton of time in the self-defense environment or the self-defense lens. Um, but here's where you might start taking, even if there was only one thing, 
and you were like, that's, that's the only thing that I learned today that I might think about integrating into my own personal combat matrix were I to get in a real martial situation. So there's a quick over, overview for you all. That's something I call lens theory. Um, in the future, I, I do want to do kind of um, extended offerings. Um, a lot, I'll just end on this and then we'll bow out. Oh, I mean, a lot of the things that I'm developing, I'm very aware I might start developing a reputation in martial arts for being the guy who sees the martial arts world through rose-colored glasses. I am super comfortable with that because I kind of believe if there are things in the world that you don't like, if you have any kind of influence it's your responsibility to try to make them the way that you believe they should be. So there you go. Thanks everybody for your time. We're gonna bow this out. If you can indulge me and end the session for today. Chinese, Filipino, Thai, Indonesian, French and Dog Brothers, Japanese, and um, I just want to say to, to the people that are here, um, you know, I'm very grateful for, this is a really weird time period because I mean, some really obviously horrible things are going on in the world right now. Um, but I've found by shutting everything down and like doing things in my living room for the past 16 weeks, like I've met all of you, all these really neat, excellent people and excellent martial artists. And it's so humbling that you would continue to give me your time. Um, and I really appreciate it. And, um, you know, we are, we're ending the pub, the, the, again, I'm calling it my commitment of the 100, 100 free hours of content um, to try to help as many people who might need it with martial arts. And the focus is going to be um, continuing this, even when our live classes, knock on wood, get going again, the, the recordings of the classes, if you can attend in real time, beyond the 100 are going to be for members. So for me, that is like, the ultimate thing is hopefully in the not too distant future, I'll have a nice small group of live students again, and we'll, I'll be training those people in these curricular progressions that you've gotten used to on a regular basis. We'll be Zooming those classes to you, members only, and if you can't attend in real time, those will become like this right now, what we're recording so you can always go back and watch them on your own and the most ideal thing would be if you can't attend if the schedule doesn't work because more than likely the schedule is going to change um soon and and as soon as i know i will let you all know but the the, the best thing in my mind would be this is just an example i on thursdays from 7 to 8 p.m I know I watch Brian's Filipino martial arts class recording and I actually like train along with it in the living room. And in that way we can sustain and like keep everything moving forward. To me, that's just super exciting. So for, again, seriously, for everybody here, um, I, 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 I just, it's like, please take the information. Okay. I can't help myself. It's just, it's, I care too much um about it so i i i know i'm i'm very self-aware and it's a problem but thank you all so much again for your time it means an awful lot to me last thing i have to do it you know for business sake anybody watching the video to formalize your training relationship with me please go to stoops omalc.com otherwise everybody thanks so much enjoy the rest of your weekend you're all that was awesome thanks everybody be safe have fun